Hello everyone, it's Michael Lazar here and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be discussing how to read the epistle in church. But before we begin today's video, I want to give you guys one last reminder to join my two-week course on learning the tones. If you're interested, email me at michael.azar at learnbyzantinechant.com. So in reciting the epistle in church, there are two factors that are very important. The first one is the most important, that the words are understood. A lot of times, the people who are in church do not have the words in front of them. So, if you are reading the epistle, you have to make sure that people understand the words you are reading. The second factor is that it has to sound nice. If your epistle is understandable but does not sound nice, people are not going to listen to it either. So... We're going to expand on these two factors in this video and figure out ways to make our epistle more understandable and to make our voice more pleasant for the listener. So in regards to making your words more understandable when you're singing, there is one thing that is pretty important. It is how you pronounce the words. The way you pronounce words when singing is a lot different than the way you pronounce words when speaking. When you speak, you tend to linger more in the consonants and less in the vowels. But when you are singing, the exact opposite needs to be true. You should be lingering more on the vowels and less on the consonants. I made a whole video about how to pronounce words when singing that I'll link in the description, but the basic rule is open to the vowel and don't close to the consonant too early. So this is how it would sound like. So if I want to take the text for the Megalanaria for Easter, it would be, the, the angel cried unto her that is full of grace. That's how you would say it. When you sing it, the angel cried to her that is full of grace. If I were to sing it the way I speak it, it would sound like this. The angel cried to her that is full of grace. You see how ugly it sounds and how it's hard to understand the words and really pick them out? When you pronounce words correctly when you sing, then the words are a lot more understandable and it makes your tone sound a lot nicer. The next thing you need to do to make your epistle more understandable is to read it a lot slower. So if you speed run an epistle, it's very ineffective because the people who are listening need time to process what's going on. If you're reading it, you're processing it right away. But if you are listening to it, you have to give the parishioners time to process what is being read. So when you read the epistle slower, people understand you better. The next factor to make your epistle more understandable is how loud you are. It is very important to be loud, not obnoxiously loud, but you have to make your voice projected. The whole reason why the epistle is chanted and not just read is because when you chant, you're able to project your voice a lot more. So make sure you take your time with your epistle and to be louder. If there's a microphone, Speak into the microphone. Sing into the microphone. You want to make sure that it is heard. Now the next part of the epistle is very important. You need to observe the commas and periods. Your flow should be very natural. If I'm going to read the epistle, I have to make sure I follow the punctuation in the same way that I would read it. Let me give you an example. So this is the epistle for the Sunday of the paralytic. So this is how it goes. In those days, as Peter went throughout all the regions, he came down also to the saints who dwelt at Lydda. So the way I'm reading this, I observe the commas and the periods. So the sentence and the phrases have a good flow to them. If I were to sing it the way I read it, it would sound like this. In those days, as Peter went throughout all the regions, he came down also to the saints who dwelt at Lydda. So what you'll notice is that when I have breaks or ends of sentences, I'll prolong the word that is at the end, or I'll put a small break in between the phrases. So it's clear. If I don't make this clear, it sounds like this. In those days as Peter went throughout all the regions, he came down also to the saints who dwelt at Lydda. You couldn't understand what the sentence is saying. But... When you properly observe the commas and punctuation points, then it is very understandable to the listener. 
The next important thing in the epistle is to make sure you accentuate the correct words. So, if you're reading a sentence, which word is going to be the most important? As Peter went through all the regions. Peter is pretty important. Regions is pretty important. Went is not really. As is not really. All, maybe a little bit. So if I were to read this with correct accentuations, it would sound like this. As Peter went through all the regions. Versus, as Peter went throughout all regions. You see how when I don't use the correct accentuations, it's hard to follow along? That is why you should make sure you follow the correct accentuations and you bring out the words that are important. So how do you bring out the words that are important? Well, one, make them a little louder. As Peter, or maybe attack the syllable a bit more. As Peter, right? That's one way. The other way is if you are singing to make it either longer or to make it go up a little bit. As Peter, right? As Peter went throughout all the regions. You can see that when you go up a little bit higher, it brings out the syllable a little bit more. Now, the last thing you can do to make sure that your epistle is understandable is to work on your diction. So, how you pronounce words. Where do you place, you know, accents in a word? Where am I going to put the stress on a word? If you don't have your diction right, then it's really hard to make your epistle sound correct. Also, if you have something like a lisp or, you know, ways of pronouncing words that are not correct, maybe you can't pronounce R's correctly or you roll your R's too much, really work on trying to fix them. Because with the epistle, it is important that you get the language right. If you're rolling your R's in the epistle and it's in English, it's not very understandable. If you have a lisp, I know sometimes it's hard to work it out. But taking the time to really try to fix it will help to make your epistle more understandable. Now, the way you practice all of these tips into making the epistle more understandable is to not sing it yet, but to read it using correct technique. Read it with correct diction, with correct pronunciation, with correct projection. When you read the epistle, not sing it, but just read it, you help to reinforce these habits. So, when you add the music to the epistle, it is easier to understand. The next step for singing the epistle properly is to make sure it sounds good. Remember, nobody wants to listen to you if you sound bad. So, what goes into making the epistle sound good? Two things. Your actual singing and the melody. How are you going to sing it? What scale are you going to use? How are you going to switch scales? How are you going to ornament things? All these things are important, and we're going to cover them right now. The first thing is to make sure you're singing with good technique. You need good breath support. You can't project if you don't have good breath support. You have to make sure your posture is correct. You have to make sure that you have a good vocal tonality. You don't want to be nasally. You don't want to sound like this. You don't want to sound really closed. You don't want to sound really timid. You want to make sure you have a good, confident voice. And that comes with vocal training. All right, I have many video tutorials about how to sing, but finding a good vocal teacher to teach you this stuff is also good. A lot of this stuff also comes from listening to your own recordings and reflecting on them and refining your singing. So you have to make sure you have good singing technique. As a chanter, it's your responsibility to learn how to sing correctly. It's irresponsible to not learn proper singing technique because you end up learning the notation, but you don't have the skills to properly cultivate it. The next thing is you have to be reverent when you're singing the epistle. You can't just read it like the Lord said. Like These are important words. The Bible is literally the word of God. If the Bible is the word of God, then act like it is. You have to sing with energy and reverence. You want to make sure that you're not puffed up, but you are engaged with the text. You want to make sure that what you're reading makes sense to you and that you understand the impact of it. If you're reading the text and it honestly just looks like hieroglyphics to you, then you need to study it more before you sing it. You have to make sure that what you're reading makes sense to you. And when it makes sense to you, naturally, you're going to have more energy when you sing. The next important thing is to make sure your pitches are good. You need to have a stable pitch always. Because Byzantine is a cappella, 
you are accountable to yourself. If you have a bad sense of pitch, you should not be chanting. Because chant requires you to be able to listen and make sure that you are in tune. If you keep falling flat, you need to fix it. And the way you fix it is by having more energy and making sure that you don't lose the energy at the end of your phrases. A bad example would be this. In those days, as Peter went throughout all the regions, he came down also to the saints who dwelt at Lida. I literally fell a whole step down in one sentence because I didn't have energy, I didn't have support, and I couldn't hear my pitches right. So making sure you have correct pitch helps to make sure that your sound is good. And now finally, we're going to talk about the musical aspects of the epistle. The reason why I left this for last is because if you don't have any of the other things beforehand, then the musical aspects are going to be useless. So once you figure out how to make your epistle understandable and how to sing it so it's more reverent and that has more energy into it, now we can talk about the actual scale used for the epistle. The scale used for the epistle is called kliton, or the reader's tone. So this is how it is interpreted. It starts on the, and you go up to zo, the zo's flat. The kazol kadi, the ga is sharp and the vu is very sharp. The ga vu gadi. So in Western terms, G, A, B flat, and then from down there, G, F sharp, E sharp, or F. So. Da 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 in those days. So that's basically the scale. Now, sometimes I like to make the zo natural. In those days, that works. But the basic scale is ton ti ton, the reader's tone. Da 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 da. So, how do you put cadence points? Where are the cadence points? So. Usually, to build tension, you want to end on the ga. In those days, it's like, oh, what happened in those days? Well, if you end on ga, or the, not the, just anything other than the, then you create that tension. And it's like, what happened in those? In those days. And then, if you want to make it sound resolved, you go to the. As Peter went throughout all the regions, he came down also to the saints who dwelt at Lida. For the cadence points, the and ga. Or, if you're really feeling daring, you can go down to low knee. In those days, you could do that. It actually would be pa in this case. The ga vu pa. You could do that. Pa vu ga di. When you go up, just make sure the ga is attracted to the di. Now, there are many ornaments you can put into the Cleton scale. For example, you could chromaticize it. So one thing I like to do when I do the epistle is if there is something that is a bit more solemn or grim or has a darker theme, I like to put some chromaticism. So this is a good passage to do that. And it came to pass in those days that she felt sick and died. And when they had washed her, they placed her in an upper chamber. Something like that. When you add chromaticism, it helps to add a darker sound, something a bit more contrasting to the happy things around it. So make sure you use this seldomly. Don't put it everywhere you see it, right? If you use it once or twice in the epistle, it helps to bring out the words. This is called text painting, or it's called paratactic composition. When you write something so that it follows the text, this is very, very useful for making the epistle come alive and making sure that people understand what's going on. Another thing that you could do is add a lot of ornaments to it, but you have to make sure that you do it correctly. My recommendation is to ornament the last syllable of a phrase. For example, if I'm going to sing something like this, I'm not going to over ornament everything. But the last note, I might want to do something with it. So, in those days, as Peter went throughout all regions, that's excessive. Some people do it like that too much. The way to do it is to do, 
in those days. As Peter went throughout all the regions. If you're going to ornament it, do it at the last one. And be tasteful. You know, it's the epistle. It is not a rock concert. It's supposed to keep your attention, but it's not supposed to be entertaining. Make sure that when you do ornaments, it grabs the attention as opposed to draws it away from the meaning of the text. So how do you end the epistle? Well, there are two basically universal musical phrases that are used to tell the priests and the parishioners that you're wrapping up the epistle. So where do you place them? The first of these ending phrases should be the second to last phrase. Not sentence, but phrase of the epistle. So the phrases can be separated by commas. So in this case, the second to last phrase is, And it became known throughout all Japa. And it became known throughout all Japa. This is the first musical phrase. Da, 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 da. You place the last syllable on the vu. You could add a nice ornament to that as well. And then the way you end it. And many believed in the... This is the last phrase that tells the priest its end. Lord, or da 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 da. You place the last syllable on the ke. Ke di la vogadi. So when you put it together, it sounds like this. And it became known throughout all Japan. And many believed in the Lord. When you follow these two phrases, you are basically universally telling any priest or parishioner that you are done with the epistle. So, we've covered what you need to make your epistle understandable, what you need to make it sound good, and what you need to make it sound musically correct. So these three factors are going to help make your epistle skills a lot better so that people can better understand the Word of God at church. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate if you liked and subscribed. And don't forget, sign up for my class. Starts Monday, May 16th. Other than that, I'll see you on the next one and have a great day.